We thought we'd show the Strog we weren't to be messed with. After beating them back on Earth, our confidence was high. Maybe too high. Did we plan enough? Did we have all the intel we needed? Our million dollar drop pods were meant to sneak past their planetary defense undetected. But then, the death toll. It was huge. In seconds, thousands gone. Whispers started. Talks of heading back to Earth. We still had more forces, but what use were they if the Strog's defenses were still kicking? Sir, we're stuck in Strogos' atmosphere. Deimos and Phobos are caught in some kind of artificial gravity field. Foxtrot squad's gone, all KIA. Then, something shifted. I remember it clear as day. We all crowded around the windows, saw smoke and fire, the big gun gone. Orders came in fast. Pilots scrambling, ships lifting off, targets lining up. Our guys were still down there, surviving. Heard Bitterman's name on the radio. The bastard was alive, fighting for us. Alone, but not for long. The slipgate we used to get here stopped working. We cheered, thinking it's another win. But our cheers died fast. No quick way home now. Sure, there's hypersleep, but time doesn't stop. What about our families, friends? Who'd still be there after all those years? Would they even wait for us? Didn't take long before we saw not one, but two massive explosions. One where Cerberon was, the other in Strogos' asteroid belt. We heard it clear. Operation Alien Overlord complete. That's the call. Time to end this war. In the aftermath of Operation Alien Overlord, the situation on Strogos is chaotic but ripe with opportunity for Earth's forces. Although it resulted in overwhelming casualties, three Marines stood against the might of the Strog Empire, pulling them down by succeeding in destroying key assets of their forces. However, despite these significant strikes at their core, the war is far from over. The Strog, though weakened, are not vanquished. With their army now leaderless, it's believed to be fragmented, with various warlords scrambling for dominance, each aspiring to become the next ruler of the Strog Empire. So the Macron's dead, eh? The Marine who iced that squib deserves a chest full of medals and a year's r and &R. This internal strife opens a crucial opportunity for Earth's forces to ramp up their offensive. During the initial assault, only two Earth cruisers were visible, but in reality, more were strategically positioned just outside Strogos's perimeter, waiting for the right moment to strike. Now, with the path clear, about 80 cruisers, part of the Grand Invasion Fleet, move in to seize control and unleash their remaining troops on the planet's surface. The second wave assault comprises multiple squads, not just troops, but also bolstered by a range of vehicles, including hover tanks, walkers, Trojan APCs and armadillo trucks are visible on the battlefield, which most of them were previously used during Earth invasion. Given the vast scale of the attack, the full documentation of all squads and their members remains incomplete. However, here's what we can deduce from the available information. Each squads bear the name of an animal. Badger, Eagle, Cobra or Warthog squad, to name a few, ranging in various numbers from large groups such as Raven Squad with 63 documented members or smaller teams such as the famous Rhino Squad with 13 members. Rhino Squad, huh? You guys must be pretty badass. Yeah, did Rhino really save Austin back when the Strog attacked Earth? Though few in number, their exceptional skills more than compensate, marking them as one of the most elite marine units in the Earth Armed Forces. Tasked with the most critical and perilous missions, they are deployed into scenarios where the stakes are highest and failure is simply not an option. Yeah, you boys have pulled off all sorts of impossible shit, haven't you? And they're still talking about what Rhino did in Dallas during the Earth invasion. Each member is an expert in his respective field and is trained to the peak of his abilities. I am Alejandro Cortez, Rhino Squad sharpshooter. Several months ago, the squad lost its former commander, Lieutenant Daly. 
but his role was taken over by Lieutenant Voss, known for his remarkable proficiency. On my way, sir. Sledge, you're with me on cleanup detail. At 30 years old, Voss may not be the most physically imposing figure, nor does he carry an air of overt authority. Yet there's an undeniable presence about him that commands respect from even the most headstrong Marine. Little is known about Voss among his squad, as he remains tight-lipped about his past. However, his history holds a harrowing tale of resilience and endurance. Prior to the Earth invasion, during what is known as the Mars Riots, Voss was captured and subjected to six months of relentless torture. Among the cruelties he endured was being repeatedly confined in a coffin and buried alive, leading to severe claustrophobia and recurring nightmares that haunt him to this day. After his rescue, Voss could have taken an honorable discharge. Instead, he chose to re-enlist, and he was eventually given command of Rhino Squad. Voss makes a bold decision to recruit Corporal Matthew Kane, a choice that raises eyebrows within the group. Holy shit! This is some ride, eh, buddy? Who's the new guy? Matthew Kane, one certified badass. A man like Kane could get us killed. Shut the hell up, Strauss. Kane's past is highly regarded, yet maintained as a closely guarded secret. His early life before the events of the war on Strogos is largely unknown, though it's suspected he grew up on the Earth-Moon colony before the onset of the Strog invasion. His military career began with the Global Defense Force and transitioned to the Space Marine Corps of the Terran Coalition of Man, where he rose to the rank of Corporal. Kane finds himself reassigned to the elite Rhino Squad, a move orchestrated by Lieutenant Voss, who sees untapped potential in him. The primary objective of Earth's forces is to establish a foothold and secure a landing site on Strogos. Achieving this would enable the Mobile Command Center, USS Hannibal, to approach the planet safely delivering crucial reinforcements, supplies, and logistical support to bolster the ground offensive. Though the plan seems straightforward, the reality is far more complex and perilous. As the TCM launches its second wave of attack, dropships filled with squads make their descent towards Strogos. The Strog anti-aircraft cannons, while not as colossal as the big gun, are designed to obliterate enemy spacecraft and other significant airborne threats. The Strog's arsenal also includes defense systems equipped with tracking missiles, ideal for targeting faster and smaller targets. The death toll of the battle skyrockets as multiple cruisers, each harboring thousands of crew members, are destroyed, along with several separate dropships succumbing to the Strog's devastating firepower. Clearing out a landing zone for a mobile command center. Among the affected is Rhino Squad. Despite desperate attempts to evade, a guided missile finds its mark, sending the squad ship hurtling towards a crash landing on Strogos. The scene presents a drastic difference compared to the first wave's massacre. The landscape is not just a tableau of destruction and death, but now a violent battleground where Marines are engaged in all-out brutal warfare. On their familiar ground, the Strog forces expose the full extent of their horror. With tactics steeped in terror, they covertly invade areas previously cleared by Marines, leading to merciless ambushes in presumably secured sectors. The composition of the Strog forces bears similarities to those encountered in the first wave with notable changes. The ever-present guards are swiftly reinforced by a familiar yet evolved adversary, the Berserkers. Known for their formidable charges, 
These adversaries have now gained new capabilities. They can launch electric bolts towards their targets from afar and violently pound the ground, generating lethal electric shockwaves. The Marines also encounter an unseen Strog creation, the Grunt. Before their Strogification, these monstrosities seem to descend more from wild beasts than any recognizable humanoid alien. Launching into combat with animalistic rage, they embody the terrifying fusion of primal ferocity and advanced alien technology. They focus on brutal melee warfare, yet are not averse to opening fire with machine guns from a distance. What truly instills dread is their response to injury. Upon being wounded, grunts erupt into a frenzy, their bodies drawing strength from the stroyant in the canisters attached to their limbs and torso. This unholy infusion not only mends their flesh, but also turns their already ferocious melee blows into something far deadlier, demanding immediate and decisive action to neutralize them. That was too close. That thing. The briefing never mentioned a massive strog. Uh, machine. Let's just hope I don't run into it again. Poor guy. He didn't have to help, but he did. I'll make sure your sacrifice wasn't in vain. Well, shit. You're not dead. Lucky for you, Lieutenant Voss was in a hurry to move out. Rhodes wanted to bury you. The LT left orders that everyone's supposed to hook up with the squad ASAP. Transmissions are being jammed, I can't get in touch with HQ, and even nearby signals are garbled. Despite the tumult resembling the first wave invasion, there are still surviving soldiers, providing each other with crucial support. You're needed ASAP. Colonel Westmore's been wounded in the leg. And I've got a Marine here with a collapsed lung. Westmore demanded you. Then he's gonna have to wait. Anderson out. One of the first members of his squad Kane encounters is Jeremiah Anderson a 19-year-old from a wealthy Chicago family. Despite having the means to avoid frontline duty, Anderson chose to serve with Rhino Squad, craving action. Dozens wounded and I'm trying to save the life of the only other medic in this area. Found our pilot about 100 yards from here. Looks like she died instantly. His resilience impresses even Master Sergeant Bidwell, who initially made things tough for Anderson with his rigorous methods. His brutal training regimes have resulted in injuries, but have also prepared the Rhino Squad for the harsh realities of war. I gave him a med pack and sedated him. He'll be okay. Anderson's a good kid, tough as they come. It's a rough break, though. Learned that the cruiser we were on got blown to bits, snagged in a minefield. All 2,200 crewmen, gone. Just like that. Ah, so you did survive. <laughs> I won the bet with Rhodes. Lieutenant Voss stationed me here to guard the flank. But you are to proceed that way and rendezvous with the rest of our squad. So you are alive! Damn! Cortez won the bet! What if I missed? We're just getting started. We gotta take out that air defense cannon, but the Strog Flyers are keeping us pinned down. There's no way to- Sergeant Bidwell, this is Voss. I think I found a way to get at that cannon. Can you reach Kane? Right here, sir. Good. Kane, go to the strong hangers. Viper Squawk will rendezvous with you there. If you can take out the launching base, the flyers won't be a problem. Boss out. You heard the man, Kane. Get to the hangers. Morris, go with him. Move out! Come on! If you don't have. Morris, communications expert and veteran in Rhino Squad, is a master in hand-to-hand -hand combat and a natural leader, stepping up when higher-ranking officers are absent. As Kane embarks on his mission, shadowing Sergeant Morris to meet with Viper Squad, they confront a menacing yet familiar adversary, the Gunner. Clad in battle gear and equipped with a nail gun and grenade launcher, this iteration of the enemy, while reminiscent of its predecessor, moves with a ponderous slowness. His firepower now shows signs of diminution, Fewer grenades are launched in each attack, suggesting a subtle yet significant shift in the battlefield's dynamics. Rhino Squad, eh? So what are we gonna do here? Our mission's to clear hostiles out of the hangar so a demolitions team can work safely. 
Unfortunately, comlink signals can't penetrate the rock of this mountain. I suppose I could stay here and relay the comm signals for you guys. That'd be great. Come on, let's go. Here, take this shotgun. It's gonna come in handy real soon. Here I am, the most talented war machine ever trained by the Marine Corps, and I'm kept out of action. Go. Just go. But ice a few freaks for me, would you? The Strog hangars operate on the same principle as old Earth aircraft carriers. Flyers are pretty much thrown out of the hangars like a rock in a kid's slingshot. Strog machinery is an odd combination of high and low tech. I guess once they find something that works, they don't try to improve it. In this moment, the contrast between a lone survivor and a well-coordinated squad becomes truly evident. A robust display of firepower, the ability to distribute the enemy's focus, and crucially, the capacity for mutual aid in healing and armor repair. Damn! Door's locked and it's our only way through. Private squad, this is Morris. HQ's finally located the demolitionist for the hangar. He should be there soon. That window's reinforced glass. It'd take a lot more than our weapons to break it. The armament of Earth's forces showcases a mix of the familiar and the futuristic. Many weapons used by soldiers are reminiscent of those seen during the Earth invasion, alongside others with more advanced, high-tech designs. Bet the eggheads back at HQ would love to get their hands on this baby. Both sides seem to utilize similar weaponry, likely explained by Earth forces having acquired Strog armaments during previous confrontations. It worked! Good job, Kane! Kane and Viper Squad enter the hangar facility and begin their ascent. Upon entering the complex, a remarkable sight unfolds. Shit. No wonder they're giving our infantry so much trouble. Look at the number of flyers they got. Numerous Strog ships line the docks. Some are readying for takeoff, while others are undergoing repairs, with parts being attended to by Strog repair bots. Keep your shit while you're tight. You can bet your ass we aren't going to be welcome here. Reaching the summit, they get an update from Sergeant Morris. Rhodes, the squad's seasoned demolition expert, is en route to obliterate the hangar. However, given the highly volatile nature of the explosives in his possession, he needs the area secured first before he can approach. While details are limited, it's been revealed that Lance Corporal Athena Hayes had a past association with Rhodes. Her bitterness over his inclusion in Rhino Squad hints that she may have sought a similar position, only to end up in the recon team of Operation Alien Overlord instead. Morris, this is Viper Squad. We've made a successful sweep of the area, giving all clear to the demo team. Still alive and kicking, eh, Kane? I'm beginning to see how you made it off that space station. Wait a minute. This is the Corporal Kane? Thought he'd be a lot bigger. Although initially little is revealed about Kane's past during his service with the GDF, the narrative gradually unveils fragments of a dramatic event that occurred during the Earth invasion. Kane, try and keep the Strog off me. These charges I'm carrying don't react well to getting hit by a weapons fire. And just so you know, these puppies go off. They're gonna take out you, me, and half this mountain. The summit of the mountain houses the launch pads and control rooms. Here, flyers are systematically transported from the hangar to one of the two launching bays, where they undergo preparation before deployment, including being fueled from thermally regulated tanks. The fuel is likely a refined or chemically altered form of stroint, which would have been processed or mixed with other components to suit the specific needs of the flyers. Okay, that's one. While neutralizing this hangar would undoubtedly benefit control over this sector, it seems that the Strog possessed many more facilities across the planet. As was previously observed, they had spaceports and multiple hangars both in and outside Cerberon, indicating that this facility represents only a fraction of the overall Strog capabilities dispersed throughout Strogos. That's number two. Come on, Kane. Let's go somewhere safe and we can fire these charges off. Follow me. Come on, let's go see the fireworks. Watch over there, Kane. HQ, charges are prepped to detonate. Detonation in three, two, one. Woo! Yeah! Those hangars are permanently closed for business. Hey, 
Rose, if you kids are done playing around, why don't you send Kane down my way? There's little respite for Kane, as Sergeant Morris immediately calls him to assist in an attack on the anti-aircraft cannon, which has become a viable target now that the disabling of the hangar has halted fighter launches. On his way back, Kane observes that most of the area has already been secured by Raven Squad. This is the first time we've been in a Strog hangar. By studying just one of the consoles is going to keep us busy for months. We've never had the chance to study an undamaged flyer before. Now we have dozens to work with. Wasting no time, they have begun examining enemy equipment. The researchers' comments filled with awe at the Strog technology. Look at the configuration of the turbine. That has to be at least 15% more efficient than anything we have. And see how they designed the fuel intake? Wow. We have to get this to the Hannibal as soon as it lands. This level of access to the Strog's innovations had not been possible during previous encounters. Although the GDF had unveiled significant technology on Earth, it becomes evident that the Strog have developed and created far more, surpassing our most impressive discoveries. So I'm supposed to interface the secondary protocol. Mine, I don't know how to make it any simpler. You have to engage the primary override. But you didn't say that. I shouldn't have to explain the obvious. Do I have to come down there and walk you through it? No, that's not necessary. I'll figure it out. Very well. Strauss out. Rhino Squad, huh? Your private Strauss is about as friendly as a Strog. It is in this setting that Kane first encounters the formidable, the remarkable, the one and only Johann Strauss. Corporal, I refuse to repair this power transfer until I'm assigned additional protection. Strauss, we've been over this. It's not gonna But happen. I am in mortal danger. This area is filled with Strauss. Thank you, Private Strauss. Your grievance is noted. Ah, uh, hello, Corporal Kane. It's good to finally meet you. I am Private Johann Strauss. You have no doubt heard of me. 21 years old, he is a prodigy with one of the most brilliant minds of our era, and he's well aware of his exceptional intellect. I am far too valuable to be left defenseless. There should be a dozen soldiers guarding me. How can they do this to me? To me, Johann Strauss. The war effort cannot afford to have me die. His significant contributions include being part of the team that uncovered the Strog's use of black holes for interstellar travel. I am one of eight humans fluent in Strog. I'm one of four who understand Strog programming. And yet our leaders continue to risk my life on a daily basis. His academic career took a drastic turn after an encounter with General Nathaniel Hastings, which unexpectedly catapulted him to the front lines. What the hell were you doing? Chatting it up with the local Strog women? Come on, let's get back to Rhino Squad. Kane, following Sergeant Morris, teams up with Lieutenant Voss and Sledge to finally make their way to the cannon. Corporal Kane, enjoying your first day with Rhino Squad? Here's something I found you might be able to use. Now that the hangars are out of commission, we have a clear path to the air defense cannon. Let's move! We quickly see why Voss was put in charge of Rhino Squad. He leads his men headfirst into the chaos of the battlefield, a leader who doesn't fear being on the front line. They engage in an intense battle, fighting their way to the control room of the air defense cannon. Give me suppressing fire from that railing. Kane, push forward. Look up. Ah, look. Another stroke will kill me. Strong to the left. You stroke don't know when to quit. Watch your word, Marines. Good job, men. Mission accomplished. This is Lieutenant Voss to HQ. The cannon is under Marine control. Geosynchronous orbit and beginning to set. Sir, how are we going to get to the landing zone with that locked surface door in our way? Good point. They use its firepower to blast open a massive door, creating a pathway for the team to the Hannibal's landing zone. Recognizing the need to prevent the weapons use by enemy forces, Voss stays with Sledge and radios Rhodes to come set explosives on the cannon. Corporal Nikolai Slijonovich, a 25-year-old heavy weapons expert, hails from St. Petersburg, Russia. Have you heard the claim to fame of our very own Nikolai Slijonovich? He is the only human ever to have killed a straw with his bare hands. Amidst the chaos of battle, he earned the nickname Sledge. After dismembering a strog, 
and using its limbs to fend off enemy forces, holding the line until reinforcements arrived. kicked off rough. Still, we managed to accomplish our first objective. It cost us a lot of lives, but at least we've got our foot in their door. Now passing through the stratosphere. Breaking procedure has begun. As they draw nearer, they witness Marines being pinned down, trying to hide against the relentless fire of heavy Strog turrets. The Hannibal is now in the troposphere. Landing zone in sight. Hannibal, requesting airstrike on that gun emplacement. We copy that. In a display of sheer power, the Hannibal intervenes, deploying its undercarriage cannons to effortlessly obliterate the enemy fortifications. All right, thanks, Hannibal. Our pleasure. Hang in there, buddy. Help's on the way. Hannibal, this is Raven Squad. We've got an injured Marine who can't be moved. Rods of that, Raven. A medic will be dispatched. You guys go on. I'll stay here. Breaking jets activated. Deploying landing strike. What are you waiting for? Let's get to the ship. Heard something big is being prepared in response to some new intel about the Strog we didn't have before. They feel rushed, but we can't afford to give them time to regroup. The USS Hannibal has landed. I repeat, the Hannibal has landed. Welcome aboard, Marines. I won't lie. I was on edge about how the team would take to me. It's tough, you know. Trusting someone you don't know with your life, especially while being dropped in dangerous territory with a unit as critical as Rhino Squad. But I'm starting to feel like I'm earning their trust, bit by bit. If things keep going this way, I actually believe we can win this war. Squad, the following is highly classified and is not to be spoken of outside these walls. Heard the mechanics are prepping four heavy trucks. So what does that mean? Not sure. But with that many trucks, HQ's planning something. The death of the Macron couldn't have come at a better time. It's imperative we press that advantage. The apprehensions of the Terran Coalition of Man were validated with the revelation of the Nexus, a vast communication network enabling Strog leaders to directly dispatch orders to their combatants on the battlefield. What the hell are we doing messing with a bomb like this? What's the worry? You got a pacemaker? I know an electromagnetic burst won't hurt us, but if this thing went off, the charge would fry every piece of electronic gear for half a mile. You know where we'd be if the Strog captured an EMP and set it off near the Hannibal? We'd be fighting the rest of this war with rocks and sticks. Our target, known as the Hub, houses major communication lines to the Nexus. We will be escorting a convoy carrying an electromagnetic bomb to a sub-level of this building. During the Earth invasion, initial indications of such structure were uncovered following the discovery of a hidden slipgate, secluded 
in a North African valley. In response, the Global Defense Force mounted an assault aimed at infiltrating and taking control of the gate. On the other side, the Strog had established a Nexus Tower, serving as the primary command and control hub for their forces on Earth. Its destruction didn't afford the GDF the opportunity to study it, as they likely did not fully grasp the significance and pivotal role this tower played within the invaders' empire. Now, Earth forces have uncovered that Strogos not only possesses its own nexus, but also utilizes a unique technology designed to encompass the extensive scale of the entire planet. The blast will overload a device known as the Tetranode and effectively cut off the Strog forces from the nexus and therefore their commanders. To ensure success, three other squads will be escorting additional EMPs to the same location. Their convoys are codenamed War, Famine, and Pestilence. Which means we are death. Yeah, we're death. Positioned within a large tower, the Tetranode acts as a massive data router, transmitting commands received from the Nexus directly to Strog troops on the field. The Nexus sounds most intriguing. To be able to process the thoughts of billions of Strog would require technology that is many generations beyond us. Although the precise number of Tetranodes remains unspecified, it is assumed that several are distributed throughout Strogos, each overseeing logistics for a designated region. This discovery also pushes to reevaluate certain communication facilities encountered during the initial assault on Strogos. For instance, the communication laser in the Palace of Cerberon may have been a tetranode, unknown to human forces at that time. Corporal Kane, your ride to the convoy is waiting for you. Step on through. During the briefing, we were quickly introduced to General Ulysses Harper. As one of the highest-ranking officers, with only the position of General of the Army ranking higher than his own, he remains a mysterious figure due to the limited information available. However, considering his impressive array of ribbons and assuming his age aligns with the storied history of the USS Hannibal, it's likely that he has experienced his fair share of conflict even before the Earth invasion. Damn it! That hurt! I told you these systems are finicky. These systems are ancient. Tell me about it. My grandfather served on this ship right out of boot camp. Think they'd retire, old girl. Well, old or not, we gotta fix her. The USS Hannibal is organized across four decks. While the specific functions of some floors remain unknown, it's likely that decks one to three house the ship's navigation center, along with various areas such as living quarters, system controls, training rooms, or additional cargo bays. On the other hand, Deck 4 serves as a hub for diverse and crucial areas. We are unable to send or receive signals in that area due to Strog interference. But a Strog unit is headed directly for Cougar Squad. Sorry, there's nothing we can do, Corporal. Then they're all dead men. Richard's out. Including the Central Command overseeing ground troops, reactor control, drop pods, launch station, and medical facilities, where scientists can be observed studying various Strog remains. These studies have unveiled two instances of what many others endured during the Earth invasion, exemplified by the cases of Samuel Dorn and Shane Huxley. From DNA, the subject has been identified as Samuel Dar, listed as missing and presumed dead after the Strog invasion of Earth. Apparently, he was captured and forced to endure biomechanical implants. The procedure for attaching the implants is evidently quite traumatic. The subject must be kept alive by a combination of steroids and health packs. While it can be difficult to distinguish human aspects from this dead grunt, it could suggest that the Strog not only remove parts from their subjects to replace with technology, but also interchange pieces between them, which would explain Samuel's dawn DNA found in this monstrosity. Shane Huxley's story is equally tragic. A former member of Rhino Squad during the Earth invasion, his absence likely paved the way for Kane's placement in the unit. We can understand that Huxley was captured towards the end of the invasion. The horror of his transformation was uncovered when a marine reconnaissance squad, operating in a putrefaction facility, encountered and eliminated Huxley. His body was subsequently brought back to the Hannibal, where a DNA test revealed the horrific truth of his fate. All higher brain functions have atrophied, which indicates the subject was incapable of independent thought. The transceiver located at the base of the skull shows almost all action was dictated by an external source. I believe for a short time after strogification, the subject was aware of his actions but was unable to control them. 
chilling scenario, to say the least. Do you see? It's just as I predicted. Indeed. The nanites infesting the muscle are repairing the tissue even after it's separated from the body. During their conversion process, the Strogs are injected with nanite colonies, microscopic machines or robots, often at the scale of a few nanometers, designed to perform tasks at a cellular level. So, are they certain it's dead? I was assured by Lieutenant Pierce it's completely dead. You remember this morning? They told us that one was dead too. That, I'll never forget. This intervention seems essential to mitigate the extreme physical trauma from strogification, ensuring that their organic components neither yes. decompose nor fall That's apart true. as a result of biological degradation. It won't work, Jacobson. The exoskeleton is hardened tribinium. Nonsense. These saws cut through marine body armor. Should have no trouble with this strog metal. While this detail wasn't uncovered on Earth, possibly as the strog started using locally sourced materials for their troop equipment, it has since been revealed that their technology relies heavily on hardened tribinium. I just have to press a little harder. Unlike removable equipment, the Strog seem to prioritize permanently melding gear, weaponry, and other technologies directly to their unit's flesh. A prime example of this is the Icarus with its gravitational pack, where the unit's arms were removed to integrate the machine directly into its back. This fusion to their neural systems not only enables continuous flight, but also grant the Icarus enhanced agility compared to the propulsion devices used as a separated vehicle. Lieutenant Voss, report to briefing. You don't remember me, do you? I was one of the orderlies at the hospital when they wheeled you in from Armstrong. How's that new eye of yours? I was surprised how much the military spent. It's top of the line. Not like the usual replacements. Kane's reputation as a survivor is cemented by his harrowing experience aboard space station Armstrong. I thought Matthew Kane was just a story they made up to scare recruits. No, he's real. And he's standing right in front of us. In an intense battle against the Strog, he was the sole survivor. A fact that remains sealed in secrecy by strict orders, fueling rumors about that Strogs were not the only things he encountered there. It looked like he'd been mauled by a dozen pit bulls. Hey. You're the Matthew Kane I heard about back on the Hannibal, aren't you? Didn't you wind up spending some time in psych ward after Space Station Armstrong? Even if they gave me the green light to spill everything about Armstrong, I'd hold back. Nobody should be burdened with those kinds of nightmares. Signal check for Pestilence. Your signal is strong, Pestilence. Switch to secured frequency 461. Roger that. Switching to 461. We're rolling out to the convoy, whole squads gearing up, except for Anderson. The kid's been told to hang back on the Hannibal. We're diving deep into Strog territory, and it looks like commands bracing for the worst. They're figuring on casualties too heavy for any quick patch-up job to make a difference. You've done some good work today, Corporal. Lieutenant Voss had a feeling about you. Said you'd be trouble, but you'd be worth it. The lieutenant's never wrong. Starting to get the measure of the rhinos. Bidwell comes off tough as nails at first. What are you doing wasting my time? Kane, you are trying my patience. Corporal, get on that truck before I throw your sorry ass on it myself. But I see the reason behind it. The squad needs someone rock solid to keep us together, especially when things get thick. This guy, Sergeant Bidwell, has one guy thrown over his shoulder and is barking out orders as he blazes away with a rifle in his hand. The man was a freaking machine. What squad was he with? I'm not sure, but he was protecting some obnoxious computer tech. He's got a relentless edge, sure. But that's what it takes. You gotta love the Marine Corps. Sure, the pay ain't the greatest and the chow tastes like crap, but where else am I gonna make a living blowing shit up? Just think of it. Rhino Squad is participating in a mission that would turn the tide of this war. We will be saving the human race. Can you imagine the party for us back on Earth when this is over? We're gonna be war heroes. And seeing how we're the brave warriors who protected Earth, the girls are gonna be very appreciative. Oh, it's going to be a sweet time. But I'm not quitting the Corps, even after the war is over. It's a perfect place for a man of my skills and temperament. HQ, this is Famine. We are in transit now. Roger well, that, Famine. Pestilence is already underway. Godspeed. HQ, this is Eagle 8. We are doing a flyby of Famine. HQ, this is War. We are proceeding to Checkpoint 1. Operation Advantage unfolds deep within Strog territory necessitating the convoys to navigate through intense combat zones with the inherent risk of detection by enemy forces. Doesn't it make you nervous we're heading in the opposite direction of everyone else? It's meant to draw the Strog forces away from us. But what if we're caught? The Strog could turn around and use our EMP bombs against us. I'm sure HQ's thought of that. At least I hope they have. Come on, Doyle, get us out of here! Our guys are really cleaning up the flyers since you blew up the hangar. 
Bison Squad, specialists in vehicle combat previously seen operating walkers, now supports with hover tanks, safeguarding the convoy from aerial attack. Yes, The troops seem unsure about this mission. It's critical, yet we're keeping our numbers lean to stay under the radar. I can't believe the level of security on this mission. I tried calling home and a couple of MPs jumped me, said I couldn't have any outside access. Even if I was stupid enough to say something about our mission, it takes six freaking hours for the messages to reach home. Our ranks thin with every passing hour, and each loss potentially strengthens the enemy's forces. Kane, where the hell have you been? Lieutenant Voss wants you to catch up with him. Hop on that truck and they'll get you where you need to be. But hey, on the bright side, Bidwell seems to be in high spirits. Death, this is HQ. What is your status? We are in the green and proceeding forward. Very good. HQ out. The convoy's path to the Nexus hub traverses the desolate terrains of Strogos, differing from Cerberon's relatively orderly environment, where signs of water and cleaner structures were once visible. Here, the scene is dominated by dirt, rock and metal structures that show signs of minimal upkeep. Crap. That must be one of those drop turrets. They're dropped by stealth air units flying in low orbit. Intel says these buggers are nasty. Although not particularly durable, they pose a significant hazard if inserted amidst the turmoil of combat. HQ, this is Pestilence. We've reached checkpoint one and are proceeding to checkpoint two. We're gonna lose this war. I can feel it. Don't you be talking like that. We have to stand a chance of winning, right? I, I mean, HQ wouldn't just throw away our lives on a lost cause. Hey, you've heard the news from the front. You know how bad things are. I don't know nothing. I do my job and shut the hell up, just like you should. We're getting slaughtered on every front because the straw got us outnumbered. The 3rd Armored Walker Division fought Strog Infantry about 30 clicks from here. Normally it'd be no contest, but there were so many Strog, they swarmed the walkers. We're gonna win this war, damn it. The Strog can't be allowed to attack Earth again. I'm just telling it like it is. We're all gonna wind up Strog. The station is a vast maze of corridors, burrowing deep into the ground and leading to a subterranean tunnel that opens to the exterior. This base houses the controls and supplies power to a defense network, mirroring the grid control system encountered in the security complex on the outskirt of Cerberon. It's noteworthy that although we never directly observed the actual grid protecting the big gun, we did witness its use in safeguarding the Strog military compound against the Gex. This type of defense proves as lethal to Strogs as it is to any other life forms attempting to cross it. They also previously employed a special type of security gate, capable of discerning whether an entity attempting to pass through was Strog or not. A similar detection mechanism was also encountered in the research hangar, where Stepchild attempted to deactivate a laser barrier. However, his efforts were thwarted when the system detected his DNA was not registered in the database. In an attempt to add his DNA, he used a medical scanner to encode his genetic information into the system, only to be identified as a threat and forced to seek an alternative method to bypass the barrier. Corporal Kane, boss wanted me to give you the strong nail gun. I bet it can sure rip the shit out of a squib. A shotgun version of the nail gun was previously witnessed used during the Earth invasion. But it may be surprising to learn that it was not the first time we saw such weapon in action. Its first sighting can be traced back to 1996, when similar weaponry was observed within a secret complex located in the southwestern USA. 
This site is notably where Dr. Gilman first encountered the Strog and utilized their knowledge and technology to enhance his own slipgate. The discovery of Strog crates scattered around the facility suggests that researchers there might have been studying and potentially reverse engineering more alien technologies, including the nail gun, long before the Strog publicly emerged as a threat to Earth. Ah, Corporal Kane! You continue to surprise me by staying alive. Go to Lieutenant Voss in that control room. He has orders for you. Hang on. Help's coming. Medic! I need a medic! The kid here got careless. Didn't check the door before opening it. Strog was waiting for him. He's lost a lot of blood. HQ said a medic would be here in five minutes. It was ten minutes ago. Go to containment door 12. I'm running a test. Glad you made it back, Kane. Strauss, what's our situation? I now control almost all containment doors. We cannot reach the controls to turn off the laser fence. The security door is locked and I cannot open it from here. That's where you come in, Kane. Get down to sub-entrance one and free the engineering team that's trapped. Then escort one of the engineers up here to cut through that door. Take Singer and Rodriguez with you. Good luck. Just got orders from Lieutenant Voss. We're accompanying you to sub-entrance one. About damn time we had to frag some squibs. Okay, Strauss. Open the door, and I will be locking the door behind you. The installation is permeated with numerous obscured alcoves, strategically utilized by the Strog as ambush sites. Hit that console and get that elevator up here now! The squibs are trying to psych us out. It's starting to work. This hit and run bullshit about a freeze is gonna be real annoying. This tactical use of the environment to launch sudden assaults is disconcerting. Through employing guerrilla warfare tactics, the Strog methodically erode the combat effectiveness of Earth's forces. Main power. Quiet. Keep your eyes open. This approach serves to implant a continuous sense of vulnerability and apprehension among the troops, effectively using psychological warfare to complement their physical attacks. Very good. Now, activating the door. Really speed. Keep back. We're going in about this place sets my nerves on edge. You catch sounds from every direction, but pinning down their source is another story. Hey, the torch is here. Hey, you seen Beesman? Wonder how he's doing. Seal it! Seal the damn window now! Where the hell did that come from? Don't know, but we better inform the Sarge. Sarge, we got movement on the scan. Okay, be sure to lay down- Shit! You almost got your freaking head bent. Marines, take your positions. We got company. Scan is clean. Whatever it was is gone. Here's your objective, Corporal. Get to that console and deactivate the defense grid. The situation deteriorated rapidly as Strog tactics evolved from hit-and-run skirmishes to a coordinated onslaught in mere moments. Destroyer USS Madison has achieved suborbital position. Comlinks established for primary tactical operation HQ. All company commanders transmit sit reps immediately. HQ! HQ! Our squad's been down and meeting heavy resistance. We're running out of room. HQ, this is Fox Squad in Sector we 6. We have engaged the Strog. I can't see a thing! Bravo, Savior! We've got a situation at Alpha Diner! Back up, oh, God. Back up now. This abrupt shift 
is a perfect example of the Nexus's strategic danger, enabling the Strog to mobilize and direct their forces with terrifying efficiency. Amidst this chaos, a familiar yet enhanced threat is revealed. Standing at an imposing height of eight feet, the Gladiator still boasts his usual shoulder-mounted railgun, but now has a new arm-mounted plasma blaster integrated into his claw. Additionally, the heavy unit is fortified with a robust energy shield capable of deflecting all incoming projectiles, including the explosive force of direct rocket hits. As soon as Kane takes his position in the designated tank, he's immediately besieged by Hornets. Despite bearing the same name, these Hornets lack the durability of their elite counterparts seen previously guarding crucial locations within Cerberon. Reminiscent of the Tormentor model deployed against Earth, their agility is their main advantage, skillfully evading tank shells with disconcerting ease. These pests are also observed airlifting and deploying convoys onto the battlefield. While a precisely aimed shot can dispatch them, landing that shot proves challenging until they pause to commence their attack sequence. Amidst the fray, another formidable opponent emerges, the heavy hover tank. Classified within the Strog Tank Division, its resilience is unmatched. Armed with a colossal missile launcher as its right arm that sends large guided missiles hurtling towards targets, and a wrist-mounted blaster on its left arm capable of rapid fire, they serve as further evidence of the vast array of species assimilated by the Strog, displaying unique physiological traits not seen in other unit types. Feels like I'm in an aqueduct, but there's not a drop of water in sight. Looks like they repurposed it as some sort of logistic corridor after the water vanished. We've witnessed the horror and brutality of the Strog through their towering units. The Yorg, the Super Tank, or the Black Widow, to name a few. Yet, these massive war machines pale in comparison to the sheer scale and power of what the Strog have now unleashed. The Rattulis is Bison 8. See anything? Harvester. At an intimidating height of 50 feet, these spider-like mechanical behemoths are the last thing any soldier hopes to face. Known primarily as anti-vehicle units, their resilience in battle is unparalleled, shrugging off the most lethal attacks from SMC's arsenal. Each harvester comes armed with twin automatic blasters for sustained fire designed to subdue opponents under a relentless barrage. Additionally, their backs house launch tubes capable of deploying homing rockets aimed with deadly accuracy at enemy vehicles. The most fearsome aspect of their design lies in their legs, capable of impaling targets with lethal efficiency. Beyond their martial prowess, the harvester's elongated appendages emerging from its torso hint at a role beyond mere combat. Whispers of fear circulate about the harvesters and their macabre practices, scavenging the bodies of their fallen foes, or in a worse scenario, those still clinging to life. Being captured alive by the Strog is a fate far worse than death, as the horrors awaiting these unfortunate souls at Strog facilities are incomparable. Exactly how far behind enemy lines are we? Far enough that it doesn't matter anymore. What do you mean by that? We're completely on our own. You mean it could take several minutes before we receive any backup? No, I mean we aren't receiving any backup at all. We're cut off from the rest of the human forces. All right, Marines, listen up. The Strog have taken out the other convoy. 
boys. We're all that's left. This mission's too big for any screw-ups. No one take any chances. No one try to be the hero. We're looking to get the EMP below the Tetranode, the brains of this facility. Why is it so cold down here, Strauss? The frigid temperature is no doubt the result of the straw communication equipment employing cryogenic technologies. Let's find a way to open that hatch so we can move forward. All clear. Okay, man. Let's move out. What the hell was that? I don't know, but leave it alone. Ah, very good. This appears to be the control room. Isn't there one spot somewhere on Strogos where I'm not either freezing my ass off or drowning in my own sweat? There. I have unlocked the passage. All right, convoy. Open the hatchways in advance. Negative. Remain where you are. I hope you have a real good reason for doing that, soldier. I apologize, but if they were to open the hatchway, they would have been subjected to supercooled air. Their lungs would have been frozen in a matter of seconds. Okay, so what do we do? I must find the temperature controls. From there, I should be able to make the atmosphere a little less hostile. Sounds good. Kane, you're with Strauss. Find those controls. You assign me only one guard? Must I die to show you how valuable I am? Never mind. This way, Corporal Kane. So who did you piss off that you always get stuck babysitting Strauss? Here, we encounter clear examples of the disturbing outcomes of the Strog's experimental endeavors within their research laboratories. In these tests, Strog scientists coldly remove organs without anesthesia to observe the agony and physiological responses of their victims, even determining how long a human can survive without them. These harrowing experiences likely led the Strog to explore and discover alternative energy sources. Previously seen as relying on stedium for their main power source, this shift raises interesting considerations about the disparity in energy quality across various parts of Strogos. Cerberon, once the capital of the Strog Empire, was primarily powered by stedium. This significant energy source was known not only to support the planetary defense system, but also vital infrastructure, such as tectonic stabilizers and the multitude of technologies inside of the Macron's palace. However, with Strogos almost depleted of its natural resources and crystal mines becoming increasingly scarce, it became evident that stedium alone might not be sufficient to power the entire planet. To counter this, the Strog would have turned to alternative sources of power, including utilizing humans unfit for Strogification as a form of battery, which, though possibly less effective and necessitating more frequent renewal, serves as a substitute for the scarcity of stedium resources. The torso units in use, seemingly alive but unresponsive and unaffected by marine presence, are kept functional to continuously produce energy. Seeing this, it's barbaric, not advanced. I can only hope they aren't truly alive anymore, just bodies reacting to some twisted form of stimulus. Be extremely cautious, Corporal. We do not want to attract that harvester's attention. Yes, precisely what I was looking for. Give me a moment. Kane, you must protect me while I adjust the temperature. The sentries are akin to the previously seen technicians, but with notable differences. These units feature a head resembling those of gunners or berserkers, yet they are distinguished by a glass bubble containing green liquid and what appears to be a humanoid-like being inside of it. Unlike other Strog units, sentries are not vulnerable to headshots. Instead, their weak point is the encased being within the glass, suggesting a crucial role to the sentry's control and operation. The previously encountered technicians are described as being controlled by a brain floating in a red preservative fluid 
within a metal body. It seems the sentries operate on a similar principle, but with a key difference. The entire being, not just the brain, is preserved and visible inside their structure. This raises broader questions about the nature of the creature inside the sentries. What species does it belong to? Why are they kept intact rather than being disassembled for parts, as is typical with Strog modifications? I have almost finished my work here. Damn! Lieutenant Voss, I must remain here and maintain the temperature controls, or the area will return to its frigid state. Okay, stay there. Kane, get back here with us. But I need protection, Lieutenant. You'll be fine, Strauss. Kane, get out here on the double. Voss out. Was that the best you could do, Strog? Strog are ramping up their attacks. They probably think we're heading straight for the Tetranode. We've got to move faster before they figure out our EMP plan. After that goes off, finding another way to the surface without the elevators is going to be a whole different challenge. Guess we'll be marching out, hoping not to turn this into a maze run. Kane, check that door. The shut off to the force field might be in there. Good job. The force field's down, Kane. Return to the squad immediately. Let's move it out, convoy. Strauss, stay on this side of the door in case we run into trouble. What the hell's going on here? Listen. Quick! Fire off the EMP! Almost there. Strauss. Half the squad is dead, so why don't you just be quiet while we pick up the pieces? Yes, sir. Damn it all. Bidwell was a good man. A good Marine. Strauss, the EMP's destroyed, but we still have to shut down this facility. Any ideas? Yeah. But it means I have to go directly to the Tetranode. All right. Kane's the only one who's uninjured, so he's going with you. If my memory of the building schematics is correct, Kane must take a crawl way out, and I will meet him at the other end. Sounds like a plan. Boss out. Kane, I don't need to tell you how important this is. Whatever the cost, you must destroy the Tetranode and bring down the Nexus. With the mission's weight now resting heavily on Kane and Strauss's shoulders, they find themselves as the only two capable of reaching the Tetranode. Corporal Kane, you should have been here a long time ago, but we will speak of this later. That is the Tetranode. Destroying it is our primary objective. The entire facility is centered around this room. We need to find the power plant. Lead the way. While many might view Strauss as difficult to get along with, it's moments like these that reveal why he's an integral part of Rhino Squad. His quick thinking and ability to formulate a plan amidst high stakes are invaluable. 
It's also impressive to see his proficiency with weaponry, especially considering his background in a more comfortable tech position before being thrust into the front lines. There, now I will raise the power plant output and that will cause a heat buildup. Let us return to the Tetra node. From there, we must find a way to disable the emergency shutoff. If we don't disable it, it will detect the heat buildup and deactivate all systems. Not sure if Strauss already has an exit strategy or if he's just masking his fear. I will defeat you! Yeah, he's gotta have something figured out. Ah, the emergency shutoff controls. So far, you have done well, Corporal Kane. Your final task will be to shut down the coolant pumps. This will cause a complete meltdown of the Tetra node. For me, a power plant meltdown spells one thing. We're on a tight clock before this place turns into a literal inferno. There should be a console in the center of the room, Corporal Kane. Activate that and the coolant pumps will shut down. In a matter of minutes, the Tetra node will overheat and destroy itself. And this will render the Nexus useless to the Strog. The stream protectors are part of the Strog elite distinguishable by their pristine white armor, setting them apart from the messy fusion of flesh and metal commonly seen in their forces. Tasked with guarding vital and significant locations within the Strog Empire, these protectors are essentially walking arsenals, heavily armored and equipped with an array of weaponry. HQ, this is First Lieutenant Hughes on the ground. We've rounded up all remaining Rhino Squad survivors, escorting them to the evac ship now. Copy that, Lieutenant. Medics will be on standby upon Lieutenant, your arrival. Hold on, HQ. Yes, sir. We've got Master Sergeant Marion Bidwell's body. We need him to be brought back on the Hannibal. Yes, sir. HQ, we're also carrying back the body of Master Sergeant Marion Bidwell. Confirmed, Lieutenant. We'll arrange for Sergeant Bidwell's Lieutenant memorial. Strauss and Kane, last seen at the Tetranode. We need a search team out there. Can't risk losing them. Understood, sir. Come on, Morris. The transport is over. HQ, I need to request a recon team. We have two MIAs, Private Strauss and Corporal Kane. Last known location inside the Tetranode Tower, but they... They might... Wait a sec. We... We've located Strauss. He's safe. Strauss, any word on Kane's whereabouts? I'm afraid not, Lieutenant. The Strog, they took him. I need to get back to HQ now. I have horrible news. The Macron, we, we were wrong. They were able to rebuild one. Shit. Dishler, take Strauss back to the transport with the others. Yes, sir. Okay. HQ, scratch that recon request. We have no corpse to recover. Uh, please advise General Harper that the Strog have a new leader. Received, Lieutenant. Bringing Rhino squad back to the Hannibal. Hughes out. I hear their voices when I sleep. I've seen the worst of war, but I can't escape the images of the Strog. A metallic spine jutting awkwardly through muscle, flesh and bone fused with wires and steel. I hear their voices when I sleep. 
created for war and fueled by the blood of their enemy. This isn't just a nightmare. It's who I've become. Rumors about the terrifying process of strogification have always circulated, painting horrific pictures of a macabre metamorphosis where bodies are mercilessly twisted and reshaped, birthing a new nightmare, the strog. One instance of a strogification facility was previously observed in Australia, where the strog had overtaken an abandoned fortified base to develop an advanced strogifier. Despite being told time and again about the horrors of strogification, this instance pales in comparison to the abominations we're now uncovering on Strogos, revealing a perspective never before witnessed as no one had returned to recount the horrific tales. The method unfolds within Strog facilities as a meticulously, painfully brutal transformation. The one we observed is concealed within a mountain, utilizing natural fortifications against enemies' bombardment. These hidden labyrinths house various specialized stations for each segment of the procedure, ensuring a relentless production of new units as long as the necessary components are available. Transfer approved. Upon arrival, subjects are stripped of all their equipment and immobilized on a surgical table. It's likely that heavy sedation is employed to significantly reduce the subject's ability to move, not only to prevent escape attempts, but also to allow the procedure to be conducted with reduced chance of fatal risks. The entire body, both inside and out, is meticulously scanned, allowing the rest of the process to precisely align and integrate every forthcoming component. At the following station, the horror begins. Using a large, acerate rod, subjects are injected a concoction of steroids, nanite colonies, and health-related medications directly into the torso. These are essential to ensure the victim doesn't succumb to the imminent trauma he will endure. From a distance, a strong scientist oversees this process, making adjustments as needed for what lies ahead. While this might appear merciless, it could be pragmatic, aiming to excise parts irrelevant to a strog's functionality, like facial features, or those that could complicate the integration of necessary components. The next phase is arguably the most sinister. With no anesthesia, a large saw blade severs the legs of the subject. Cutting through the flesh, muscles and bones, the human body has a limit to how much pain it can endure before its receptors and nervous system become overloaded and shut down, the body's way of escaping intolerable pain. Following this is the brutal integration of equipment into the victim's body. Although it might appear more tolerable than the amputation, the process of bolting or melding equipment onto the subject is excruciating, as parts are directly connected to their neural system. This is a perfect example why subjects are injected with nanite colonies before the procedure, to ensure their body doesn't reject the extensive modifications or succumb to shock and die during the operation. <laughs> While the previous step might be deemed the most horrifying and brutal, the subsequent one could seemingly be the most dangerous. The implantation of a neurocyte. This chip is inserted through the skull to lodge within the brain tissue, specifically targeting the prefrontal cortex. This region is crucial for language, working memory, reasoning, and executive functions. Although the exact function of the technology remains unclear, 
It is known to contain an onboard AI, which likely plays a role in commandeering these brain functions. It leaves much of the host's original attributes intact, while enabling comprehension of the Strog language and, crucially, suppresses any form of resistance, ensuring complete obedience to commands from the Nexus upon activation. All subjects that sustain excessive damage are sent to the Waste Processing Facility, where their remains are systematically repurposed, ensuring that nothing is wasted. Once activated, the neurocyte converts the subject into a strong, a transformation considered irreversible with current human scientific understanding. late for this one. I'm doing you a favor, Marine. Wait! Take a reading on him. Lieutenant, according to the med chip, this is Matthew Kane. Is he Strog? No, the neurocyte in his head hasn't been activated. The Strog don't control him. How do we know the neurocyte isn't gonna suddenly switch on and he winds up fully Strog? He won't, I guarantee it. HQ, this is Rhino Squad. We've got an injured Marine who needs immediate evac. Me Falcon 5 are the coordinates being sent. Roger that, HQ. Rhino Squad out. Welcome back to the land of the living, Kane. Ah, oh, my head. It's so loud. Every movement feels like, like I'm being handled from the inside. The pain, it's almost gone, but I feel like I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Not in the right body. Let's hope someone can fix this. Fix me. A Strog. The Strog really did a number on you. You better say a lot of prayers tonight because someone's sure watching over you. Kane, you look like hell. You're damn lucky we happen to be in the neighborhood. We were passing through the building trying to get to the extraction point. Never thought we'd find you here. What was the chance the Rhinos got here before? That thing was activated. Yeah, it's still inside me. Wonder if that could cause problems. What if it can be turned on again? Rhino, this is HQ. What's your status? We should be at the evac coordinates in 10 minutes. There's a medic with Falcon 5. Take the injured Marine to them. The rest of your men will have to continue on to the original extraction point. Copy that. Rhino out. Okay, Anderson. You escort Kane to Falcon 5. We'll get this door open and proceed without you. I'm supposed to escort him alone? You did guarantee he wouldn't turn strong, didn't you? Yeah, but... It'll be fine, Anderson. <sighs> Come on, Kane. This way. Anderson doesn't fully trust me. I can't blame him. Pretty sure I'm the first str One... First one this close that doesn't try to kill him. In fact, I'm pretty sure none of the Rhinos or any other Marines have ever been through this. Still, I'm not worried for him. The kid is tough. Look at used to it. Anderson, this is Falcon 5. Sorry, but we have to dust off now. We have incoming. HQ, HQ, this is Falcon 5. We were playing. Holy shit. Now was our ticket out of here. Anderson, this is Lieutenant Voss. Things are looking seriously foobard. Rendezvous back with us at the Medlad storage facility. We'll head to the primary extraction point. <laughs> but maybe not dead. I might still have a chance to find him. What the hell was that thing? Despite their unassuming size and less menacing appearance, scientists may hold responsibility for the greatest number of atrocities among all Strog units. They are the tools behind the experiments and discoveries that drive the Strog's war efforts, 
resulting in countless victims sacrificed in the name of progress and domination. Scientists come equipped with tools for research and experiment, such as a circular saw and several needles on mechanical limbs. Despite their primary focus on scientific endeavors, they won't shy away from repurposing these tools as weapons when necessary. They also wield poison gas-filled grenades, which release a toxic cloud to slowly harm their targets. We're given a disturbing look at what a strong scientist can do with captured human. The body, its expression etched with fear and agony, as though it were alive during its dissection, presents a chilling sight, leaving us to only hope they died shortly after the experiment began. Hey, this is Lieutenant Voss. HQ just told me about Anderson. I'm sorry to hear about that. He was one of the best medics I've ever known. But let's focus on getting you to safety. You're gonna have to catch up with the squad, Kane. Meet us at the med lab storage facility. We'll wait for you there. Now, partially strogified, Kane gains access to Stroyant health stations. Previously seen but inoperable within Strog facilities, he can now use these stations to heal himself due to their Stroyant content, possibly enhanced with another component we will soon learn about, as we will witness other instances of this heart-shaped station. Kane, Kane, is that you? Oh, this section caved in. I'm not sure where the rest of the squad is. My comm link is damaged. Find your way around this mess and we'll figure out a way to get out of here. Damn, Kane, it's good to see you. I knew you could handle yourself in tough situations, but you've really gone above and beyond. When we heard you and Strauss were missing at the hub, we assumed you'd been killed. It's sheer luck we found you in the medical labs. Don't worry, we'll get you back to the Hannibal and... Deliver new prisoners to prototype testing and assembly. Anderson, now Voss. Capital units at full readiness. His voice wasn't there before. Voss is captured. If I move quick, maybe I can free him before they take him for... Prototype testing and assembly. There might still be time for Voss and Anderson. The teleport dropper is a creature resembling a dog capable of deploying small teleporters that summon reinforcements during battle. Despite their menacing look, they aren't aggressive and typically flee after deploying their devices. The appearance of the teleport dropper is reminiscent of the parasite, yet it doesn't seem to have undergone significant alterations, with much of its body preserving its original appearance. This is Command HQ to all units. A full retreat has been ordered. All squads are to meet at the waste facility for immediate evac. All right, Louise, all ass. The clock is ticking and this is one flight we don't want to miss. Lucky break getting this, Walker. It ain't much for cover and sure is bulky, but it's loaded with enough firepower to make a difference. Feels like I'm walking around with a giant target on my back. Road transfer has reached dispersal perimeter. Intercept and terminate. Kane battles through intense opposition with the Strog determined to eliminate him due to his unique status as the only rogue transfer to survive their Strogification process. This makes him an invaluable asset for Earth's forces, potentially holding key insights into Strog technology and knowledge. Tactical teams deployed to dispersal complex. Priority Alpha. Similar to the guards, the tactical Strog appear far greater in warfare than other Strog units. As their name suggests, they act more as trained marines than mindless soldiers. They take cover, attempt to flank, and utilize a wider range of weaponry. Intriguingly, their weapons are not melded to their bodies, possibly due to their proficiency in combat. If his neurosight had been activated, Kane would have become one of them. Believed to be transformed from highly skilled marines known for their combat prowess, their presence underscores the Strog's capacity for rapid adaptation. These units, which did not appear in the initial wave invasion, 
exemplify how the Strog can quickly refine their Strogification process to create specialized fighters in short span of time. This also illustrates the Neurocyte's ability to dominate a subject, enforcing obedience while preserving their combat knowledge and skills, enabling these tactical Strog to execute commands while using their prior military training. Destroying production. Shit. I'm not even inside and the smell is unbearable. The facility is organized into four key sections. Waste processing facility, putrefaction center, recomposition center, and dispersal facility. Starting with the dispersal facility, a notable feature is the intake station, presumed to crush deceased materials for stroyant processing. No doubt a grim fate for any living beings caught in its mechanism. These crushed remains are then transported to the putrefaction center to begin transformation into what is known as liquid putrefaction. Biochemical fluidic transfer station three has been breached. Another focal point of intrigue in this area is the biochemical fluidic transfer station. This heart-like organ is presumed to facilitate the movement of biochemical fluids throughout the facility. Disturbingly, it appears to undergo regular cardiac arrest events, only to be revived by electrical shocks in a continuous cycle of death and revival. Transitioning to the next area, the recomposition center serves multiple functions. With holding cells and a human testing chamber, it mainly features a large sterilization system, which submerges barrels into a vat of unidentified yet seemingly acidic liquid. Then, post-sterilization, these barrels are filled with the transformed liquid putrefaction, now refined into a substance that we believe is the primary purpose of manufacturing inside the facility. Hey! You up there! Let me out! Hey, you're Matthew Kane. Right after we got word about you, the Strog attacked my squad. I was the only survivor. It looks like there's a passage out of this area right above us. But the only way we're gonna reach it is by stacking some of these barrels up and climbing over them. Looks like you're gonna have to restart the barrel sterilization process in order to get that conveyor online. See if you can find the sterilization controls. They must be located deeper in the facility. <laughs> Despite its name suggesting otherwise, the light tank is anything but light in its capabilities. This eight-foot-tall war machine boasts formidable durability matched by its heavy firepower. Equipped with a multi-purpose flamethrower and a heavy mace for melee attacks, it charges at its targets while shielding its face, making headshots a challenging task. Hey, I got company. Get your ass back here now! The facility also housed a testing chamber that more closely resembles a torture chamber. Previously, the Strog were seen employing smaller versions of a lightning gun. However, the new variant being tested here on a Marine appears to be significantly more powerful. Cobra Squad, this is HQ. Please respond. What is your status? The deeper I get into this place, the more Marine bodies I come across all trying to make it to the evac point. All of my squad is dead! How the hell do I get out of here? Remain calm, Private. Shit! I've been spotted! Come on, me! Come and give me, you sons of bitches! Woohoo! Thought the stench was unbearable before. Now, it's beyond words. A research team should be studying this facility. Somehow, the Strong are able to break the strain down into pure enzymes. Enzymes are biological molecules typically proteins, that significantly speed up the rate of virtually all of the chemical reactions that take place within cells. They act as catalysts, meaning they lower the energy required for reactions to occur, allowing processes that would otherwise be too slow under normal conditions to proceed at a much faster rate. In the putrefaction center, the Strog initiate the decomposition of biological remains, a process that naturally releases enzymes. As decomposition advances, the remains are conveyed through a series of stations designed to accelerate breakdown and putrefaction, eventually transforming them into a liquid state. This enzyme-rich liquid putrefaction is then consumed by a massive entity 
central to the entire operation, the Stroyant processing creature. This grotesque being, whose origins are shrouded in mystery, consumes a concoction of raw liquid Stroyant combined with unknown materials beyond our scientific understanding. As this entity digests the blend, it moves through channels mimicking intestinal tracts, refining the concoction until only pure enzyme remains. The creature appears to have undergone numerous operations resembling strogification, yet lacks the characteristic blood-orange eyes typically seen in strogified beings. This discrepancy suggests that, despite displaying aggression and hostility, the creature might not be fully under strog control. Immobilized and force-fed raw stroyant, being condemned to endlessly repeat its grim duty without autonomy. To all escaped Marines, this is the evac team. Meet us outside the waste level. Hey, you're Matthew Kane. My squad was scattered. Just got word we're assembling back at the entrance of this facility. Watch yourself. There's acid sprayers in here that are true through armor in no time. Warning. Decomposition solution activated. There are freaking zombies down here. I just killed one, but it bit me. Shit, I need a medic. These aren't zombies. They're partially strogified marines. This is some kind of dumping ground for botched transfers. Last, but not least, the waste processing facility's function is straightforward. It serves as the final destination for all failed strogification subjects. These individuals are condemned to wander mindlessly through this putrid place until mercy dissolves them with acidic spray, or until their rotting corpses become liquefied remains. It would also be unsurprising if these remains are used in the putrefaction center, ensuring that nothing truly goes to waste. Okay. Anderson? I'm here. Don't move, I'm coming. Help me. Anderson! This way. Please. It hurts. Anderson! Kane. Kane. The horrors. It hurts. I know. I'm sorry, Anderson. Make it stop. Make it stop, Kane. It's gonna be okay, kid. You're gonna be fine. Kane, okay, please! Make it stop! Make it stop, please. Kane! Make it stop! Make it stop! Hey, is that Kane? Damn, are we lucky to see you. We're the last of Cobra Squad. That door is the exit out, but we can't get through the security scanner. Yeah, it fried Private Johnson when he tried to go through. I analyzed the scanning circuits. All they're looking for is proper Strog ID codes. Wouldn't Kane have those codes? He looks pretty Strog to me. Yeah. Yeah, I bet they do. How about it, Kane? You want to try walking through? It should read you as Strog. Braving through to disable the system, Kane is faced with the horrifying vision of Strog experimentation and disregard of living beings. Voss was ripped from his former existence, from a life of respect and pride, and was shattered, diminished to merely a shadow of his former self, with every aspect of who he once was disregarded and obliterated. Kane, former lieutenant, has been grotesquely integrated into a robotic mech suit standing over eight feet tall, designed for merciless combat. This monstrosity, perhaps the most heavily armed creation seen in the story, is equipped with a dark matter and lightning gun for arms, a back-mounted homing missile launcher, and a teleport dropper capable of summoning Strog reinforcements. Shielded by an energy barrier that can absorb immense damage and regenerate from electrical sources, Voss retains a semblance of his former self, speaking to Kane briefly before the onslaught begins, managing to resist the neurocyte's control momentarily before succumbing entirely to its influence. After what I endured on Space Station Armstrong, I thought I'd seen my worst. But now, it cuts deeper. Bidwell, Anderson, now Voss. 
Wow, he was your LT? You had to do it, man. If he lived, the Strog would have gotten a lot of military secrets from him. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. The man met his end in the very way he dreaded most. Confined, trapped within a shell he couldn't escape. He brought me into the Rhinos. Gave me a chance to fight the horrors. I saw a leader without fear, a mentor. Look, it's Matthew Kane. He's alive. Come on, get on board. We'll have you back at the Hannibal in no time. Horse gave me a chance. Showed me what courage truly is. Come on, get on board. Move it, move it. I owe it to him, to all of them, to finish this fight. HQ, we've located the few survivors of the waste facility. We are dusting off now and en route to your position. Macron to all strong. Prepare for a direct assault on the enemy command center. Locate and eliminate the rogue transfer. Exterminate all opposition. They call this strongification? Looks more like mutilation to me. Merely half of his original body left. I'll bring a scanner over. Let's see what they've done to his brain. It's been determined the Nexus is too vast to be hurt by one EMP bomb, or a dozen for that matter. The strong communication network needs to be cut off at the source. And that source is housed in this building. The core. Welcome back, Corporal Kane. May I be the first to say you look like shit? Son, you've got a lot of strong hardware attached to you. And we don't have the equipment here to remove it. Frankly, I don't think even one of our advanced medical facilities could do much. Those Strog implants are too deeply connected to your central nervous system. We're about to execute a massive assault to destroy the core. Unfortunately, it's very well protected. We'll need to access the security stations at the tops of these nearby towers. Data storage, networking, and data processing. And that would be where Corporal Kane comes in. Upon his return to the MCC, Kane undergoes an exhaustive medical examination to verify that he remains free from Strog influence. This moment reveals the deep-seated disdain humans hold for the Strog, as evidenced by the crew's reaction when Kane walks through the USS Hannibal. Hey, look. A freak. His altered appearance provokes fear, suspicion, and outright hostility. I hope they brought you here to experiment on. You got a death wish, Squib? His life has been irrevocably altered by his strogification. The global impact of the war on Earth means nearly everyone has been affected by loss, fueling a deep-seated loathing for the strog. To the world, he would not only appear monstrous, but also become a focal point of intense hatred and potential violence. Corporal Morris has been given a field promotion of lieutenant, and I have been promoted to sergeant. I know Morris will do a very good job, but these What's that doing on board? Just saving your hide like any other Marine. You're real tough as long as you got a bodyguard, aren't you? Wanna find out? You don't wanna be doing this. Try me. What do you say we find out if your blood is still red? Why? You looking to donate some of yours? You eyeballing me, Strong? You don't scare me, freak. Again, we are expected at the mission briefing. Be careful, freak. Lose your bodyguard and you're dead meat. Shit, Kane really does look like a freaking Strog. Intelligence believes that because of his Strog physiology, Kane is the only one who can deactivate the security stations. Kane? You most likely are our last best hope of destroying the Nexus. Battle stations, a strong force is incoming. Flyers and ground troops are confirmed. Harvesters approaching on the left flank. We need walkers over there ASAP. We can't expect it. Ah, 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 fire! Help me! Walker Rangers 5 is on fire! Get flanks out of there!
Following a turbulent landing and reuniting with a fellow Marine, Kane is tasked with restoring power to the tower. The descent of the numerous pods caused significant damage to the torso units powering the facility. To address the destruction, Kane activates Strog repair bots, setting them to work on the damaged structure and systems while he and Raven Squad finds a way to reactivate the tower's power. On his way, Kane discover a weapon formerly wielded by Voss in his Strog form. Whoa, that's one big fucking gun. The Dark Matter Gun. Dark matter is a mysterious and invisible form of matter that does not emit, absorb, or reflect light, its presence deduced from its profound gravitational influence on celestial bodies as it steers their movements across the cosmos. In an innovative manner, the Strog have managed to harness this dark matter, contain it, and use it as a weapon. The resulting device launches a core that drifts slowly through the air, pulling in and dragging along his path most living entities until it strikes a solid object like a wall or ceiling. Corporal Kane, our orders are to accompany you down to distribution. You lead, we'll follow. Is this what the Strong have planned for all of us if they take over the Earth? Why? Why would the Strong do this? Something about that gives me the creeps. Don't touch it. The Iron Maidens feature a humanoid upper body, but unlike those we previously observed, they do not have legs. Instead, they levitate, their lower body replaced with streams of energy ribbons flowing beneath them. These variants have the uncanny ability to disappear and re-emerge at will, compelling foes to frantically search their surroundings. Additionally, their capability to emit a high-pitched scream blurs and distorts the vision of nearby adversaries. While they exhibit a humanoid appearance, their true origins remain uncertain. They may have been fashioned from women captured during Earth and Strogos invasions, or possibly derived from an alien lineage, hinting at a civilization with a physical structure reminiscent of our own. Hey, this is Hollingbeck. Good job. The TSDs are being redeployed. I'll get back up here on the dock. With power now restored, Kane needs to return and access the control room that opened the hangar doors, allowing Earth transport ship to deploy reinforcements. This is Falcon 1. We're burning up fuel here. I need those hangar doors open. Unknown by them, the Marines will soon uncover what the Strog utilize as defense mechanism for the towers. That heat source is moving rapidly towards the hangar. Whatever it is, you... Shit! Something's under the hangar floor. Fortunately, it retreats, but there's no doubt it will reappear soon. You, contact HQ. Yes, sir. Have them send medics immediately. Yes, sir. Don't you die. Damn, what a mess. That tower guardian tore through us like a tornado of knives. All right, Strauss, both Kane and I are in the data storage tower. What now? Greetings, Corporal Roth. You must locate the security interfaces. But be careful, only Corporal Kane can access them. Will do, Rhodes out. Exiting the hangar, Kane and Rhodes ascend the tower to activate the first core access link. I wonder how the rest of our squad's doing. Last I saw Strauss, he was surrounded by about 50 Marine bodyguards. He also got a big group of techs bowing and scraping to him. It's the happiest I ever seen him. The first objective complete, Kane is directed to head to the next tower. Given the considerable distance, he must utilize the Strog transport system for rapid movement. HQ, this is Scorpion Squad. We've taken heavy casualties and need an evac at the bridge. Scorpion, no evac units are in your immediate area. Secure the bridge control room and sit tight. Secure the bridge? What the hell left? There's only two of us left. Do the best you can, Scorpion. An evac unit is in route. HQ out. 
While the mission's weight falls squarely on my shoulders, I'm far from alone. The Marines, they're out here laying it all on the line, fighting with everything they've got. For me to make it through, it's a tough pill to swallow, realizing they're sacrificing their lives for someone looking like the very thing they've spent the entire war trying to destroy. They've got orders to keep this bridge secured. You can go on to the processing tower. Well, okay. You're quite lucky I did not shoot you when I first had that strong face of yours in my crosshairs. But then, had I killed you, I would have lost the bed with Rose. And that would not do. I am on my way to the processing tower. Why don't you accompany me? But before we can proceed, this tram must be rotated in the proper direction. The tram system on Strogos is extensive, revealing that the logistical train and transport options observed in and around Cerberon represented only a fraction of the planet's network. With its numerous lines and stations, the network covers significant portions of Strogos, although it's unclear if it connects all areas of the planet. Many men died to get us this far, Cade. Must take control of the processing tower at all costs. Stay sharp! We will no doubt have issues getting through the hot zone on the way to the processing tower. Look to the left! This is not going as easily as planned. One less strong. I cannot take much more of this abuse. Come on, this place. Cortez, this is Morris. Are you and Kane at the processing tower yet? Yes, we have just arrived. Okay, drop off Kane. You're needed at the networking tower right away. Kane has to take care of the security station at the top of the processing tower. But I had hoped to stay with Kane. No can do, Alex. Sledge will be here soon enough to lend Kane a hand. Very well. Cortez out. I'm sorry, Kane, but I must go. Good luck to you, my friend. Like the previous tower, power here was also cut off, this time intentionally by the Strog to thwart Earth Force's access to the summit. After restoring power, Kane teams up with Sledge, and under Strauss's guidance, they make their way to the top of the second tower. Kane! Over here! It is good to see you, Kane. I do not know if you have heard, but the attack on the core has cost many lives. We must succeed so that they will not have died in vain. Gentlemen, Strauss has finally arrived at the networking tower. This mission is going to get more technical, so I'm handing over communications to him. Good luck, guys. Get this mission done. Morris, out. Greetings, this is Strauss. I have finally been able to hack into the Nexus. The large machines in the area you've just entered are data pumps. They move information from the networking tower to the storage tower. This is a very vital area to the Strog, so expect to meet strong resistance. Strauss, what are those devices on the ceiling? The data stream you see will act as a guide. Once its path is corrected, the stream will lead you to the top floors of the processing tower. Now we must find the security station on the roof. How I hate to wait for elevators. You are weak like a kitten. The core security interlock from the processing tower is now deactivated. Well done, Corporal Kane and Sergeant Slidjanovich. I would ask you to remain there and not allow the Strog to reset that console. Good luck to you, Kane. Ah, well then, you don't need Lux so long as you have a weapon in your hands. Farewell. You again! The Guardian makes yet another appearance, swiftly navigating between the towers with surprising speed despite his massive size. Find your own lift! Kane, 
The network guardian, towering at an impressive 30 feet, ranks among the largest strog ever encountered, surpassed only by the harvester due to its elongated legs. Its origin remains a mystery, raising questions about whether it is a unique entity or if there are others like it hidden away. Could it be a remnant of the fauna from a planet the strog conquered, or did it belong to a society of its own before being assimilated by the strog war machine Upon defeating this behemoth, Kane restores the final link to the Nexus. Ah, uh, the core security station is finally deactivated. I won't bother asking what took you so long. He's dead. Barrister's dead. I told him not to go through. Perhaps he should have listened to me rather than trying to play the hero. HQ, we have a Marine down at the core teleporter. He just wanted to get in there and battle the Strog. That proved to be a mistake, didn't it? Only Strog can pass through it, leaving Kane to face the heart of the enemy alone. The road transfer. Are you human, or should we now call you strong? We believed we had gathered sufficient knowledge from your species on Earth, yet that solitary marine demonstrated the remarkable persistence of your kind. Alas, even he was broken, a regrettable loss. His destiny was sealed by higher powers, chosen by those who observe from beyond. He might have been a formidable asset to our strength, but you, you still possess potential. Your form of frailty has been replaced with our might. Why resist? The strong offer you power beyond any human aspiration. Corvo Cain, can you hear me? Hopefully the shielding around the core has completely blocked my signal. I must admit to being envious of you, Corporal Kane. The technology you are witnessing must be truly spectacular. You might want to hold off on that envy, Strauss. I've got a feeling you wouldn't be too keen on the welcoming committee down here. While the area boasts some of the toughest Strog units, it's not as heavily defended as one might expect. However, it's crucial to remember that a human infiltrating the facility would be deemed impossible under normal circumstances, as only Strogs can enter the Nexus. creation of a new Macron, astonishingly rapid, likely within just a few hours, marks a significant departure from its predecessor. It not only boasts a formidable arsenal, but also distinguishes himself with his sheer size, relying solely on his own might, rather than a battle walker, as his predecessor did. He also possesses a significant advantage due to horrific technologies he's equipped with, which allows him to power himself by absorbing the essence of torso units. All eyes are now on Kane, as he alone can destroy the Nexus. Get out of there, Kane! What you could become! Get out! That's a good 
work to make all good bestowed upon you strength. Make it stop. A grander purpose. Despite your victories, your world will never view you as we do. How many Marines did they tear apart to build that? I hope you don't lose your bodyguard, Square. To them, you will forever be one of us. Make it stop, Kate. A strong I ain't no strong. I'm a space marine. Corporal Matthew Kane hailing from Lunar Colony. A survivor. A fighter. One certified badass. The Macron's dead and the Nexus is destroyed. Not a bad bit of work, Kane. Kane did an adequate job executing my plan. Humble to the end, Strauss. Kane's actions have sent the stroke forces into disarray. Lieutenant Voss would have been proud of you, buddy. You survived the impossible. And speaking of that, there is the small matter of the wager I have won. Yes? Kane, yes, sir. What is it? All right, but, sir, all right. Kane just got back. Hey. What do you say we go for? Yes, sir. Don't see to it. You, Kane? Kane, you have new orders. 